What should your first cloud project be? Perhaps these sort of images come to mind, but I want you to ground that thinking and give you some practical advice. You want to choose something that demonstrates speed and agility, two of the things that are the biggest pluses of moving to the cloud. You get tremendous speed, you get tremendous agility. The other thing is start with something where you can get a quick win. Uh, what are we talking about? Think about one to three months max. Think about something that is small, well-defined, doesn't have a lot of complexity, something that you understand deeply, something that demonstrates the spirit of the web that lets you point to it and say, take a look at this. This is the sort of thing that we should be doing. Also, ideally something fun. If this is something going to, if this is going to be something that other people are going to try, you want it to be um, that when you achieve it, you get excited, right? Uh, the other thing as well is if this is going to be something you're going to hold up as well, don't put too much technology into it. Don't put too much of the whiz bang into uh, this project. You want the organization to be able to understand it, to be able to emulate it, to be able to replicate it. And there's only so much that an organization can absorb. So try to keep it simple, try to keep it small, try to get a quick win, try to do it uh, as fast as you can. Uh, the other question might be is what technology do you use for your first project? Uh, similar advice. There's a number of technologies that you know well, that you understand the use cases well, that you've tried them, you know, end times, that you know the ins and outs of them, so you're not going to be surprised. Uh, typically, web applications, this have been running for 20 years, and people who have experience in this domain know the stack very well. And so you're not going to be surprised. Also, the type of applications that are in this environment fit very well to the cloud. So one would be web, the other one would be mobile applications that you have some experience already with, and that, again, once again, you know your use case as well, you know the technology well, you're not going to be surprised, and it is something where you can minimize your risk as you move to the cloud. The other thing is the level of complexity. There are things that have a lot of hair, as sometimes we like to say. There are things that are just unpredictable, difficult, and are just fighting you every step of the way. And there are other things that you just know well, you can trust them, they have years of performing in an ex in a expected manner. And so something, for example, like shifting a, a web service to the cloud that you've already put into a VM and that you have clean APIs, that would be something that would be uh, very low complexity, something that's well understood, something that already has low sharing. And what I, what I mean by low sharing means the type of dependencies that you have onto your environment are pretty small. It is well encapsulated. And this is a practice in general that you want to continue even when you move to the cloud. The other thing that you want to avoid uh, is something like a legacy mainframe that has all kinds of dependencies. It has it comes from an era where the type of uh, uh, understanding and customization that had to be made onto your own environment is just too high. And so because of that, choose something that, once again, gives you a high degree uh, of certainty about what you're going to do, what you're going to expect, and that you're simply now tackling the cloud abstractions, the cloud way of thinking. Uh, the other thing as well is you want to make sure that this illustrates a way in which you can have some savings, a way in you can illustrate a transformation of a business process. And the reason for that is that you know proving business value is the quickest way to gain support in your organization. And so with that in mind, balance the value, balance how well you know the technology, balance the complexity. The other thing to mention as well is, I went the wrong way. The other thing to mention as well is that at times you sometimes may think, I can't do this, I don't have the right people. I'd have to hire people from elite universities that <laughs> live in remote areas <laughs> like MIT that you see here before you. But the data shows pretty well that what you want is a high level of enthusiasm. You want people within your organization that are passionate about this technology. And as architects at times like to say from the cloud, uh, where do you think we hired the people that we have? They came from your companies, right? And so 
you want to identify those people within your organization that are passionate, that really seek out new technology, that have a proven track record of being innovative. You know, the so-called fanboys or fangirls. Uh, they can become, after the project, champions or evangelists, uh, perhaps even leads, but certainly contributors and people who are going to be who are going to work harder than you expect them to, and that are going to be deeply passionate about the possibilities. This will also create a pool of candidates for when you move to creating a cloud center of excellence. An important point as well is that if you want to motivate uh, your technical teams, is that there's a huge benefit professionally for learning cloud skills. Uh, in the U.S., cloud professionals earn 360, 363% of the U.S. median personal income, so more than three times the average salary of the U.S., and so this should motivate a lot when it comes to professional uh, paths and, and being able to improve your earning potential. And the last point here is, do you do bottom-up or top-down? In the early days of cloud, this was still very experimental. It was more grassroots. It was the, the innovators trying to drive up uh, transformation. Nowadays, it is well understood the potential, and having leadership aligned with technology can provide tremendous benefits. So a clear support from the leadership plus good workforce uh, enthusiasm and passion uh, could can has a great potential when it comes to your uh, your first project. The early days of cloud had a lot of the ex experimenters. They had a lot of the grassroots movement that brought the technology from bottom-up model. More recently, the understanding of cloud potential is much higher. And so the opportunity for strong leadership aligned with technology is, of course, the best case scenario. Some of what you might think of when it comes to your leadership and your top-down approach is to have a cloud center of excellence that is one that provides best practices that in general minimizes the pain that if bottom-up approach groups were to go it alone would have to go through. There are a lot of things when it comes to integrating with the corporation that are painful to do for any one group and that if you have a, center, uh, a central resource that can facilitate that, it would be a welcome addition. Uh, as I mentioned before in, in other lessons, uh, have, making it attractive enough so you don't have to dictate is a great place to be. And so ultimately, uh, these are some good guidelines. There is no one way to take your first step into this world, but these are some guidelines you might consider as you plan your first project. <laughs>